Good morning. I'm Linda Goler Blount, President and CEO of the Black Women's Health Imperative, and welcome to this very important conversation on screening mammography in Black women. The Black Women's Health Imperative has worked for years to raise awareness of the importance of breast cancer screening, and we have fought on numerous occasions proposed policy changes to raise the age to begin screening mammography by keeping the age at which we start looking for breast cancer at 40, we have helped save from between 1,100 and 1,300 lives. Black women get breast cancer at about the same rate as white women, um, but on average about seven to year, seven, five to seven years younger. And 28% of our breast cancers actually occur under the age of 50 and 8% under the age of 40. So we would not want to raise the age at which we started to look for breast cancer. And breast cancer, black women are 30% more likely to get a more aggressive form of breast cancer called triple negative. We've all heard the statistic that black women are 40% more likely to die from breast cancer. But the thing we know is this is an issue of access, not biology or genetics. And there's some evidence that suggests that black women may be more likely to have dense breast tissue, which makes this campaign all the more important. There's clear evidence that 3D mammography is superior to detecting lesions in dense breast tissue and frankly, all breast tissue. So we know if black women and white women have the same cancer, same diagnosis, same high quality treatment, they will have the same outcomes. This is why the Black Women's Health Imperative has launched the Power of Sure, a partnership with Hologic, Rad Aid, and, a, and made possible through them and in partnership with Mary J. Blige to make sure that black women have the information and the resources they need to get early screening mammography because there's just no reason for us to have such poor outcomes. I want to thank our esteemed guests today for their support in this fight to make sure that black women don't die needlessly from breast cancer. This, this is a very special event and I want to thank those of you who have joined us today for these 25 minutes to learn about this campaign and how you can help your members and constituents learn, learn more and reach black women with this life-saving information. And now I'd like to welcome Virginia Harris, National President of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women. President Harris, the screen is yours. Thank you, Linda. Good morning. To our astound leaders present on this call today, Dr. Patrice Harris, immediate past president of the American Medical Association, Dr. Camille Clare, National Medical Association, Dr. Kimberly Leonard Je uh, Jeffries, National President of the Lynx Incorporated, Beverly Evans Smith, National President and CEO of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. Thank you for being a part of this very important conversation today. NCBW vision aligned with BWHI and all of the organizations uh, represented today. Our national health initiatives are designed and implemented in response to critical national issues that affect African-American women communities. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Congresswoman Robin Kelly. Prior to Congresswoman Kelly's election, she was a member of the Illinois House of Representatives. Congresswoman Kelly has dedicated her career to public service as an advocate for families in Illinois. She has worked to expand economic opportunity, community wellness, and public safety around the state. Her energy and commerce work is focused on expanding access to health care, consumers protected, protection for American families, and economic development. The Con Congresswoman served as chair of the Congressional Black Caucus Health Brain Trust and co-chairs the Congressional Caucus for Black Women and Girls. Now you will hear from Congresswoman Robin Kelly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Harris. I really appreciate that introduction. Hi there all, this is Congresswoman Robin Kelly coming to you from the Chicagoland region. I hope everyone's doing wonderful. I could not be more excited to be here. I mean, who doesn't wanna hang out with Mary J. Blige and of course my sister in Congress, Congresswoman Yvette Clark, and to all my other Greek sisters out there and Black Nurses Organization, 100 Black Women, uh, links, everybody that's a part of this, it's great to see you. I am so happy the Black Women's Health Imperative invited me to be here today. 
They have worked for nearly 40 years as the only national organization focused on improving health outcomes for our nation's 21 million black women and girls. And I just can't say enough about its leader, Linda Gola Blount. And it's even better to be here because we're all together for an important cause, the kickoff of Power of Sure campaign this month to spread breast cancer awareness. Every October, we all go pink. I have on mine today. But do we really take the necessary steps to protect our health and health of those we love? In short, are we getting our annual mammograms? Are we doing the necessary screening? So if there's a problem, we catch it early. This month, we want to educate more Black women on the need to get annual breast cancer screenings and help women find locations near them, in some cases, free screening. As chair of the Congressional Black Caucus Health Brain Trust, I know too many stories of bright, remarkable young Black women who have lost their lives to breast cancer. Tragically, Black women like us are more likely to develop breast cancer at younger ages. In fact, we develop breast cancer on average five to seven years sooner than white women. And if we do develop it, our risk of dying is 40% higher for a number of reasons. Late detection, tendency to develop more aggressive forms of breast cancer, and limited access to the latest and most effective screenings and treatment. We deserve better, so let's demand it. So we have to do our regular self-exams and you have to schedule your annual mammogram or find a screening near you. Because let's face it, we've got a lot of people depending on us to stay healthy. We must also advocate for ourselves with our physicians and take the steps to learn how to ask for the latest technologies like 3D Tamiya Census, which has been shown to detect breast cancer earlier because it can more effectively penetrate dense breast tissues, which is the case for many black women. If this terrible pandemic and the racial disparities that, has, that it has highlighted, highlighted has taught us anything, it's taught us that our health and the health of those we love is literally in our hands. But this month, don't just wear pink. Actually schedule your mammogram. It is so important. It could save your life. We know that education, awareness, and screening, and early detection saves lives. This disease is beatable. Early detection and quality treatment has led to a 100% survival rate after five years for all women. So get screened and let's stand up to breast cancer. If you're already a breast health warrior, take this message on the road and bring it up with a friend. I know it might seem a little awkward at first, but she'll appreciate that you cared enough about her to ask. Ladies, we've known that we're all in this together. So please, please, please take your health in your own hands and encourage your sisters to do it as well. I just wanna thank Mary J. Blige for adding your remarkable voice to this movement. And thank you to my sister in so many fights, Yvette Clark, for being here also and leading with me, the Caucus on Black Women and Girls. And thank you to the Black Women's Health Imperative and the partner organizations who's always been partners in so many fights for launching this screening initiative. You are literally going to save lives. And now it's my honor to turn it over to the one and only Linda Golablant. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Con Congresswoman Kelly, for your support and your partnership um, and all of the work that you and, and Congresswoman Clark are doing. Um, we need you in this fight and uh, we're gonna win. And, and now it is my great pleasure to introduce Grammy Award winning, Oscar and Golden Globe nominated artist, Mary J. Blige. We at BWHI couldn't be more pleased to have such a powerful voice for black women's breast health and a fearless advocate for the black women's wellness journey. So Mary, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. I'm, I'm so grateful to be here. Um, I don't know if you know, but I have a really personal story that you know, relates to breast cancer. And, um, you know, one of my aunts passed from breast cancer. And um, I believe that she would be here today if she had this information or access to this information or just knew anything about proper health care. And, you know, just when we were growing up, no one spoke about this. No, no woman in the house spoke about breast cancer, mammograms, anything. So the reason why I wanted to team up with the Black Women's Health Imperative is so that young girls, teenagers who are about to be women can have the information that I didn't have. 
And I didn't get this information until I became a woman and started going and taking care of myself on my own. So I, I want to help someone somewhere, just like I've, I've been doing all my life. My whole life story has been about helping someone with an example, not by preaching and telling them what to do, but you know, falling down in public and getting back up, you know, going through hell in public and getting back up. And this is a, this is another thing. I, I get my annual mammograms and I just want to share with women that a, a mammogram can save your life. So I'm extremely happy to be here and to be that voice. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate that. Um, and you're lending your voice and, and, you know, I always say you are fearless in talking about the black women's health journey. And so recently, um, you had a mammogram, and, and could you tell, talk um, to those of us on this call a little bit about that experience, um, when you started, what, what the mammogram is like, and you know, all, you know, what Black women who perhaps haven't had a mammogram yet, but are over 40, um, could be thinking? Right. Well, you know, a mammogram is extremely important to me now, but when I first walked into that office, I was 40. And my, you know, thank God I had a um, GYN that referred me to, you know, get a mammogram. So I'm like, oh, the first thing I'm thinking is, oh God, I don't want to get, you know, a breast cancer diagnosis or is it going to hurt or, you know, what's going to happen. But, you know, I'm a really courageous one, always been courageous. And I said, you know what, I'd rather know than not know. I'd rather know what's going on with my body. So I went in and um, all these things were racing through my head. Um, of course, you know, they make you undress and you have to take one of your breasts out and stick it in this machine and they smash it down and, and it's a little uncomfortable, but it's nothing. So it's, it's, you know, before you knew it, I was out of there and I was waiting anxiously for my results because I need to know. I've always been the type of person where I need to know, you know, what's going on with my, with my body, but I've never been, you know, in my past, I haven't been that person. I hated myself. I didn't love myself. I was young and dumb and crazy and doing all kinds of types of things, but God has granted me the, the life, uh, you know, to be able to, you know, take care of myself. And, and he's given me a chance, a second chance, a third chance to be able to say, you know what, I want to know what's going on with my body. I don't want to die. I need to know I'm nosy with it. So it was, it was enlightening. My first mammogram experience was enlightening. And ever since that day, I've been going every single year in the middle of the pandemic. I went, you know, um, because I, I, I had, to, I had to know and, um, was very clean. The facilities were clean, you know, uh, they had masks on, they made sure they took care of us and it was great. And I had the three, I think I had the 3d mammography as well. So I was able to look at my breasts in this machine and it was, it was, it was, it was enlightening. I'm not going to say it was like, well, it was fun. It was just enlightening. And now it's more enlightening because I'm, it's what I do. It's normal. Yeah. And, and that's so important that, that women know that they don't have to be afraid to go in and, and have this, ha have a mammogram. It doesn't take that much time. And, you know, to your point, you know, we know. Um, recently, um, we saw that uh, Ananda Lewis revealed that she has stage three, a stage three breast cancer diagnosis. And, and one of the reasons she went public um, is that she recognizes what you have said, Mary, that black women can be very private about our health and, and not talk about it. We, you know, we mind our own business and we don't put it out there in the street. But she said, you know, we don't talk enough um, out op in the open about our health with one another. But you've been very vocal. What, what are some of your thoughts about you know, talking about our, our health um, in public and revealing what's going on with ourselves to family and friends. I think, I, I think as much as you're able to do without you feeling forced or ashamed, or just if, if you want to, and, and I've done everything because I want to, no one has forced me to speak about my life in any stage of my life, you know, from, from, from the songs I sing. I've always done things because I know that if, if we're going through this much hell, it's got to be for a reason. And it can't just be for us to just sit on the hell and die. It's for us to expose that hell to someone else so they can say, girl, me too. I need help too. I need this too. So I, I, I feel good about us starting to speak up. I can only speak for myself because I'm speaking. And I just feel good about helping someone. I always feel good about saving them, especially Black women, you know, because we suffer the most. 
And I, I just want us to, to be enlightened and know that, you know, you don't, you're not alone. And, and I've always been that woman that said to black women, you're not alone. You've never been alone because whatever you've been through, I've been through it 10 times. And guess what? I still go through still. So yes, it's, it's extremely important for me to be that voice. Yeah, and you speak such truth to, to our lived experiences every day. Um, I, I know you, you've got to go, but I just want to ask you know, one last question. You know, what message would you have to women? And if, you know, if women, women want to find out more information about this campaign or how to find a mammography center, you know, what, what could they do? Well, you can, first of all, let me just, you can go to uh, BWH, I mean, you can go to be sure, BWHI.org. And that's the first thing you could do. The second thing you could do is not beat yourself up about not having gone yet. Don't be ashamed. It's all right. It took me, I was in my forties when I went, you know? So if you're in your thirties and you're thinking about it, you know, if you're in your eighties, whatever it is, just relax it's it's okay like this is not a judgment this is not a preach this is an example this is me showing me sharing you my mammogram and i you know there's a video of it online of me actually going into the building so just you know and and your health is your wealth if you it re remember that you can't take care of your children you can't go to work you can't do anything if you're not healthy yeah that is so true well mary j blige thank you so much for your voice for your partnership, for your commitment, and your passion for Black women's health. We really appreciate this partnership. And you know what I can say, which we can't often say, but we can, we can save lives. And we'll, this partnership and this collaboration is going to be really important to help with Black women know that there's something they can do. So I appreciate all of your work and your effort and your support. Thank you so much. Thank you, Linda. And thank you, ladies, for listening and having me. I'm, I'm honored. This is it's an honor. I have goosebumps. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and now what I'd like to do is um, introduce and bring on Congresswoman Yvette Clark, who has represented New York's ninth district since 2003 and New York's 11th district be before that. Um, Congresswoman Clark has been a strong supporter of the Black Women's Health Imperative, a member of the Congressional Black Caucus, and, you know, you know as, as Congresswoman Kelly said, a stalwart in this fight for, for health, health equity, eliminating health disparities, women's access to all of the health um, and the rights that they're entitled to. And, you know, I just couldn't be more pleased. Uh, to, to have you here. Thank you so much, Congresswoman Clark, for, for being here and, and just, you know, sharing a few minutes of your perspective um, and your voice in this very important campaign. Thank you. The screen is yours. Well, let me thank you, Linda Gola Blount, for your extraordinary leadership, your tenacity, your focus, your commitment to Black women's health. Let me acknowledge and say, a pleasant good morning to all of the outstanding women's organizations that are represented and present here today. I see uh, my uh, president uh, and want to acknowledge uh, uh, the presence of uh, President uh, Beverly, who is, is with us. Uh, I'm wearing pink today, uh, but we, we refer to it as light red. Um, I'd like to also acknowledge my sister in service, Sister Congresswoman Robin Kelly, an outstanding leader in the House of Representatives when it comes to the health of the Black community, leader of the uh, Congressional Black Caucus's uh, Healthcare Brain Trust, uh, my uh, side uh, partner in the Caucus on Black Women and Girls, as well as the Energy and Commerce's Health Disparities Working Group. Uh, and again, to all of the women here present, uh, to the incomparable Mary J. Blige, thank you for sharing your experience and being a leader in this space, using your celebrity to lift up uh, Black women across this country and around the world. Um, and, and thank you for sharing, again, your experience with us. Today, we find ourselves 
battling a pandemic that has disproportionately impacted some of our most vulnerable communities, including Black women. This is, this is no different from the disproportionate impact of breast cancer, given that we often get cancer at a younger age than white women. And when we get it, it's more deadly. I'm thankful again that Mary J. Blige is helping us in bringing awareness to the importance of annual mammograms. But I want to talk for a minute about COVID-19, which has become yet another barrier to getting screened. While COVID is far too deadly by itself, it has also resulted in very serious consequences for women who have delayed their annual breast screening mammograms. The data showing the drop in breast cancer screenings is dramatic. In one study, during just the month of April alone, mammograms dropped by 89.2% and breast cancer related treatment visits dropped by 47.7%. In another study across 28 states, the number of normally scheduled mammograms dropped by 63% between the months of March and June. Does this matter? Yes, in fact, the National Cancer Institute predicts that a single six month delay in breast cancer screening can result in nearly 5,000 additional deaths by 2025 for, from breast cancer. Missing regular mammograms in all, is all the difference in the world when it comes to finding cancer early and resulting in quicker treatment and better outcomes. Breast cancer screening counter centers are, talking every, are taking every precaution to keep patients safe. In the August survey of more than 1,500 women nationwide, virtually all of whom have received a mammogram since February, found clinic safety to be the same or higher than expected because of the protective equipment, temperature checks, facility, cleaning, and other steps. Before I go, I want to say that I am happy to work closely with the Black Women's Health Imperative to ensure that we support screening despite the pandemic. And I hope that you will continue the fight around the issue and continue to spread the word. You know, Black women tend to be ambivalent as it is. The, the COVID crisis ha has added another layer that uh, will add to that ambivalence. Let us undergird one another right now and encourage one another to do what we must do, particularly during this month of October, this month of breast cancer awareness, to encourage each and one, every one of our sisters, friends, and relations to get that mammogram done the sooner that they can be screened, the sooner that they will know their status. And for those who need treatment, life-saving treatment, the sooner that they will be able to begin that process of treatment and healing. This will uh, conclude the session. So please stay on for a few minutes and watch this public service announcement from Mary J. Blige. And as we say on committee, I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you, Congresswoman Clark. I think we're going to queue up the video. And, and while we are doing that, I want to thank President Virginia Harris, National Coalition of 100 Black Women, Congresswoman Kelly and Clark, and of course, Mary J. Blige, and all of you in your esteemed organizations um, we have a lot of work ahead of us, but I'm looking forward to partnering with each and every one of you to provide you with the information, the tools, the resources you and your constituents need to help us win this fight. So thank you very much for joining us today and enjoy the video. I was in my 40s when I, when I got my first mammogram. I went to my first exam not really knowing what to expect. My body started talking, so I started listening. And what I discovered is that, you know, it's, it's a little weird and, un and uncomfortable, but it's just like a split second of discomfort. 
it's not much. You know, after that, it was, it was like, okay, I'm not afraid anymore. I lost my aunt to breast cancer. And that has crossed my mind a bit when I've gone in for my annual appointments. However, I haven't let that stop me from being sure about my health. And I don't think anyone else should either. Black women are often very private. We don't want people knowing our business. But the more we open up, the more it allows us to share information that can be life-saving. The best way to address worry is with facts and information. And a mammogram is going to provide both. Having a mammogram can save your life. The earlier breast cancer is detected and the earlier treatment begins, the better the outcomes are. So often as black women, we prioritize everyone and everything, our partners, our children, work. But we need to be intentional about loving ourselves enough to take some time to see about our health. Recently, I had a mammogram and the facility did everything possible to make sure that everyone was safe by following recommended guidelines. For more peace of mind, you can always call your facility to ask what their COVID-19 protocols are so that you know what to expect when you go in for your appointment. Now that I know that 3D mammograms are better for black women because we have denser breast tissue, I encourage every black woman to ask for this option during their first or next visit. And don't be shy about it. You are the best advocate for yourself and have every right to ask for the best care options for you. People know that I speak openly about both the good and the bad that happens in my life because it has made me who I am. I'm speaking openly about women getting mammograms because I want us to begin to feel more comfortable and empowered to talk about our breast health. Today is a great day to make a decision for you. You can go to the Black Women's Health Imperatives website, bwhi.org, for a list of places in your local communities that offer 3D mammograms. If you're a Black woman in your 40s, it's time to schedule your mammogram today. Thank you. Be safe and be well.